Okay, so we're here for some practice on probability. So I'm going to talk you through this worksheet here as I work it through. Uh, and this should help you get ready for taking the test or even taking a retake on the probability A test. All right, so we're only going to do the toughest problems here. Uh, this is not uh, the easy stuff. Uh, you may want to work on that in a different place, but this is going to be some of the toughest of the probability A material. All right, so if we take a look at this survey, uh, when they ask what's the probability that a randomly chosen person is at a good weight, that is really important that you understand whether they have said, are they talking about just the underweight people or just the good weight people? Uh, no, they said that they're choosing a randomly chosen person. That means always try to figure out what it's out of. It's out of that, which is 11631, okay? Now, of course, all of these could be divided, made into a decimal, uh, but I'm going to save some time by not dividing them uh, and making them into a decimal. So if you want to do that, of course, you can always grab a calculator and divide them. All right, so uh, what's the probability a randomly chosen person is at a good weight? Well, the good weight people weren't just these people, was also these people, and so that's a total of that. So that's going to be 7471 out of 11631. All right, notice I figured out what it was out of first before I went on to figure out what was uh, on the top. All right, what's the probability that a randomly chosen person is female? Well, again, it's out of everybody. It didn't say, like, given you're only picking from females. It's out of everybody possible. So that's still out of 11631. And females, uh, if I look for all the females total, that's here, and that's going to be the 5224. Okay, next one. Probability that a randomly chosen male. Noticed right there, they didn't say randomly chosen person. Randomly chosen male. So they were only picking from the males. So that means I only look at this part of the chart right here. If they're only picking from the males, the only ones that were possible were 6407. And now I'm looking for what I want, which was the people who were underweight. And that was 1057. Okay, next, what's the probability that a randomly chosen person with good weight is male. So again, they're only picking from, in this case, people with good weight. That's this right here. And so if it's out of that, it's out of 74, 71. And then they want to know, oh, the thing we want would be a male, which would be 4389. 4389. Okay. Next we have Two friends try out for a sports team at their high school. Karen tries out for the lacrosse team and has a 40% chance of success. All right, so to do that, I'm going to zoom in on Karen, who's going to be my first. And this is her area. Karen, there we go. Uh, and she's either going to be successful or not successful, okay? and she had a 40% chance of being successful, then that means she had a 60% chance of being not successful or not making the team. Then, after Karen finds out her answer, then we go and find out about Becky, who is either successful or not. So this is Becky's area of the chart, this middle zone here. And Becky has a 30% chance. Must be tough to make these teams, man. And then a 70% chance of not. So I'm going to go like this then. 0.3 for success. And 0.7 for not. All right. Now, in my experience, it's always best to just finish the chart. And so to do that, I'm going to multiply the 0.3 times the 0.4. Uh, and 4 times 3 is 12. And then i got to remember uh, to move the decimal over. And so then there is a... 12% chance that both Karen and Becky are going to make the team. 
all right? And then this one here is going to be 0.4 times 0.7. That's a 28% chance. 6 times 3 is 18, so there's an 18% chance that it's Karen not making it, and then Becky is successful. And then this last one is uh, Karen and Becky both not making the team. That's the 42% chance of that. Okay, once you've got those four, now we can answer this pretty easily. What's the probability that both girls will make their teams? All right, so both of them making their team uh, with success and success, and that's up here. So that one's just 0.12. Now you might be saying, don't we have to divide by something? Well, if we're going to divide by something, everything was possible, which is all four of these, and they add up to one. So if you want to divide it by one, you can, but then that's still just going to be 0.12. What's the probability at least one of the girls will make the team? At least one means, would this qualify? Yeah, they both made it. That's at least one of them. This one had at least one of them making the team, and that, that one represented Karen making it and Becky not making it. This one was Karen not making it, and Becky is making it. The only one it isn't is this last one, and so it's those three. Now, I can add those three together, uh, and that adds up to 0.12 plus 0.28 plus 0.18, uh, let me see, that adds up to 20, 30, 40, 58%. Now, couldn't I have done that a different way? Yes, I could have. I could have said that that's like this not happening. So I could go 1 minus the 0.42, also giving me a 0.58. So either one of those two ways is what is uh, good for at least one. At least one means not zero, so not that. And not means one minus something. Okay, given that Karen makes her team, what's the probability that Becky will also make her team? As soon as they said Karen makes her team, then this part happened. We don't have to like think about what happens if she doesn't because it says she makes her team. Now, what's the probability that Becky will also make it? Well, then we can just look at these two choices. And so it's as simple as 0.3. The answer is 0.3. Now, let me give you another way to think about it, though. Given that Karen makes her team, only these two things are possible. Only 0.12 and 0.28 are possible. Doesn't that sound like possible, which is what the denominator is supposed to be? And then, oh wait, I'm making sure I did this right. Yes, I did. Okay, good. So the 0.12 and the 0.28 are the only two things that are possible now that we know that Karen made her team. All right. So then I could put this one, which is the one where Becky also makes the team, uh, which is the 0.12. But this over this ends up being that, which I showed you a much simpler way to do it in the first place. But either way, the answer is 0.3. All right, next, given that at least one girl makes her team, what's the probability that Becky makes her team? All right, this one's trickier. At least one of the girls makes the team. Hey, we already figured that one out. At least one of the girls makes the team was a 0.58. So that's what's possible, and that goes on the bottom. Now, the probability that Becky makes her team? Becky making the team was this one and this one. So that's 0.12 plus 0.18 out of 0.58. Now, there is a faster way to do this, and I think if you actually add this up and divide them, you'd see, oh, couldn't you have done it another way? But this is the way I want to use to explain that problem. All right, so now uh, I'm going to go to my next page. Let's take a look at that one. All right, we are supposed to make a Venn diagram for this situation. And I'm going to show you where the common traps are, where people 
uh, will mess this up. All right, I'm going to try to make this bigger, and so I'm going to make it like this. And this is going to be piano, violin. Could you have done it another way? Sure, but you'll have to just like turn your head sideways or something if you want to see how it would look if we put these in different spots. Maybe a violin that had been at the top. And There's a lot of different ways you could write this, but where they overlap and stuff, that'll only be one way. All right, I'll tell you how I'm thinking this through. First of all, there's 100 students pulled. I always like to put how many possible kind of on the upper left part of my graph. There's 100 total kids, okay? Next, 73 p play piano. A lot of kids just go, 73, right here. Nope, that is totally not right. Because all of those spots, all four of those little segments add up to 73. So I'm going to put a little 73 right here because I don't know how that's distributed out into those four places where piano is located. Okay, so don't just drop it in. you got to think first. 32 play both the piano and the violin. Again, people want to put the 32 right here. No, you can't do that because these two spots together add up to 32. All right, so I'm going to get my eraser out here and go to the next one. 20 students only play the violin. Finally, a number I can just write right in to my chart. 20, that's the, where the only spot is. Two students play all three instruments. Excellent, I finally know this number. And then that other one, which was 32 together, means this one must be 30, plus that two in the middle makes that 32 there. Okay, can I put in the 73 yet? Nope because I still don't know this spot right there. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is three people play both flute and violin. All right, here's violin and flute. There's already a two in there, so there's one more right there. Don't put it where the one is, because three people includes both the middle section and that one, like this spot and this spot together, that makes three. That's the biggest thing people had trouble with uh, when they took this test. All right, next up, three people play the flute and the piano. Once again, the total is three between these two areas, so uh, this two and this one together will make three. All right, and then uh, seven people play the flute. So tempting to put a seven right there, but you do not. The total, including those people that have already been represented, the two and the one and the one, that adds up to two, three, four. Uh, and then this must be a three right here to make it a total of seven that play the flute. All right. And then three play no instrument at all. Usually we put that outside of the circles, and I'm going to put a three out there. So now I can do this last section, which is the, it adds up to 73, the piano people. But I could have also done it even before that. I could have said this has, must be 40 because 40 plus 30 plus the 2 plus the 1, 40, 30, and the 2 and the 1, that all has to add up to uh, 73. And that 40 must be in that last spot. So I'm just double-checking all my answers here. And yeah, I've got it set up right. So that's the biggest mistake, is people had trouble uh, making those numbers uh, go in the right spots. All right, next, what's the probability that a randomly chosen student at MHS plays only the flute? Well, flute only is the three. And remember, it was out of 100 people. And we said randomly chosen students, so it's out of all 100, so it's three out of 100. What's the probability that a randomly student, chosen student at MHS plays neither the piano nor the violin? Well, if it's not piano and it's not violin, then who's left? Well, there's only those three people down here that play the flute and these three people that don't play anything. And so that would be six people out of 100. Notice it didn't say given this or that. It said a randomly chosen student, which means it's out of everybody. Okay, next. What's the probability that a student plays the violin or the piano? Now, or, I've been teaching my students 
uh, means it's a big answer. So you don't, by accident, grab just the people where violin and piano overlap. A lot of really common answer that's wrong is to say 32 here. Uh, but violin or piano includes everybody that's in either one of these. Because if you asked any one of them, do you play the violin or the piano? They would say yes. Okay, and so what does that add up to? Well, I know because it's out of 100 and there's six people on the outside of that little group uh, that it must be 94 people. Now, 94 out of what? Out of 100. I didn't say any givens, and so it's all is out of the biggest number. Now it says given. Given that a student plays the violin. Okay, remember, we have to look and see what's possible. If they play the violin, that's not out of 20. That's a very common mistake, but I take the 20 and the 30 makes 50, plus the 2 plus the 1 makes 53. So it's out of 53. Notice I always get that first. Now, what's the probability that they also play the piano? Remember, I can only pick from people in this black circle here. So I can only look for the piano players that are in that possible. I was only asking violin players, so I'm not asking the other piano players. All right, so the ones who play piano in there are the, are the 30 and the 2, which makes 32. So this one's 32 out of 53. Next, we're just basically testing you in this next section on do you know uh, how to use these different um, notations. So PV, that means probability that you're going to find a person who plays the violin. Well, in that black circle there, the violin players, it's not just the 20. It's the 30 and the 20 and the 2 and the 1. So that's 53 violin players out of a total of 100 kids. Probability of not F. Okay, so then not flute player. So the flute players, there's only seven of them. So how many not flute players would there be? Well, then out of 100 people, it would be 93 out of the 100 were not flute players. So that little dash thing, that means not. And that you could do 1 minus the 7 out of 100 uh, because 7 out of 100 was the probability of the flute players. So probability of not flute, 1 minus the 7, which would be 93 out of 100. Okay. Uh, next is probability of N. What the heck is N? Oh, it says N is the piano players. They didn't want to use P. I totally understand because P and probability usually goes together. So piano is the N. So this really means piano or violin. All right. Well, piano or violin is already been answered up here. This is violin or piano. Cool. So that's got to be 94 out of 100. It's just a different way to write it, okay? Next one, probability N and V. Now, ands are small answers, okay? So N is the piano, and V, piano and violin, that's 32 people. The 30 and the 2, though they both have piano and violin. A lot of people think, why the 2? Just because they also play the flute doesn't mean they don't play the piano and the violin. So it's 32, and it's out of 100. And next one, this one right here, that little symbol, the upside down U, that means and. So I just threw that in there to show you that's the same exact question and just written a different way. 32 out of 100 again. All right, given N, ooh, it's a given. And given N is the piano. So I'm going to circle that in blue now. Given that they're a piano player, it's got to be inside that blue circle. So that means a total of, what was it again? Oh, yeah, I got the total given to me in the problem. It was 73. So it was out of 73. Now, probability of violin, remember, you can't take anything outside that blue circle. Only the things in the blue circle were possible. So of those four numbers, the 30 and the 2 are the ones that played the violin. So that's 32. Remember, it was a given question, so noticed that changed the denominator. All right. 
And then the last and final page. So draw a tree diagram for the following problem. Eight rocks are, put, are painted and put in a bag to be drawn out randomly in a probability experiment. One is painted red. Two are black. Here, I'll make a little picture. One's red, two are black, and five are green. One, two, three, four, five are green. Okay. Two rocks are drawn out one at a time. If the first rock is not replaced before the second one is drawn... Okay, so I'm supposed to draw a probability tree diagram for this. All right, so I'm going to say out of my eight rocks, there's three things that could happen on that first draw. You could either get a red or a black or a green. All right, and the probability of each of those, well... There's a red one was, how many red ones were there again? Uh, one is red. So one out of, how many rocks were there total? Eight. One out of eight. How many black ones? Two out of eight. And how many green ones? Five out of eight. And so that's, uh, should add up to eight out of eight. And I'm double checking and it does. Yay. Okay. Now there's a second rock drawn. And notice that they did not replace the rocks. So when we have this second try and it's either red, black, or green, then the probabilities have changed. If you got a red the first time, think about it. Can you get a red the second time? All right, not if they didn't replace it. So this one's zero out of and is there even eight rocks in there? No, zero out of seven. Then for the black ones, if you got a red one the first time, then you didn't get a black one. So there's still two black ones left in there. And so this is two out of seven. And last but not least, the green ones, there are five out of seven of those. And so that makes a total of seven out of seven because zero and the two and the five add up to a total of seven out of seven. So yay, I've got that part done. Now I'm going to do my second draw, or sorry, my black option here. It's either you're going to get a red, a black, or a green. And if I got a black one the first time, then there's still one red one left. And so it's one out of seven. If I got a black one, there's one less black one in there. And so then there's only one black one left out of seven. And I can just add those together and say, oh, there's two out of seven. So this means five out of seven left here because this has to add up to seven out of seven. Or I can say there's five green ones in there and there's seven rocks left. All right, let's just do this last one kind of fast. R, B, G. Stick with a capital G because that's what I did before. And if I got a green one, there's still one out of seven chance of a red one. If I got a green one, then there's two black ones in there. So there's two out of seven here. And then the last one's the green one. And that's if there's been a green one drawn, there isn't five left anymore. It'd be four out of seven. And I'm checking to make sure my three branches add up to seven out of seven. And they do. Awesome. Okay. So... Are these independent events? They are independent events if they're the same probabilities if you replace the rock. But wait, they did not replace the rock. And therefore, these are not independent events. So this is... No, these are not independent because it depends on what you got the first time. All right, next. What is the probability that at least... One of the true draws will be a black rock. All right. Well, anything is possible, so it's out of 100%. Then at least one of them has to be black. I'm going to identify all the things that are the ones where at least one of them are black. That's a spot where at least one of them was black. That's a spot. And so is that. And so is that. Because I got a black one the first time, so at least one of them would be black. 
And then last but not least is that spot. So you'd take the answers for all of those spots and you'd add them up. I'm going to take a second to do my math on that. Pause and I'll be right back. So those add up to 0.466. Oh, interesting. That got really messy. I apologize for that. Uh, let's see if I can clean that up. Okay. Now, what's the probability of black and green in any order? Well, first of all, none of the top ones are right because they had a red. Um, black and green. Let's see if I can circle the right ones here. Here's black and green. And here is a green and then a black. So it's those two. So it's 0.179 or, which means add, 0.179. So you can add those together to get your uh, final probability there. Which is 0.358. And then, given a green was drawn first, what's the probability of red, or sorry, green, then red? Now it says given a green was drawn first. I'm just going to go down this branch and say that happened. A green happened first. So then what's the probability that red will be next? It's a 1 in 7 chance. That's all you got to do. All right. So that's finished, uh, and I encourage you to uh, take a shot at these again without maybe my help and uh, and just see if you can do it. Uh, and I wish you the best. Take care.